recording as well. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, hi, welcome all. Uh, the session will be started in another two minutes. I request everyone's Yeah, uh, so good afternoon all. Uh, on behalf of ReCommerce, it gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you all. Uh, I'm your host and speaker today, and uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today uh, as we talk about the budget 2022 focused on uh, reverse logistics, recycling, and circular economy. And to make sure we are helping you uh, the best, uh, I request everyone uh, to uh, post all your questions in the Q&A box, which, will be which is placed in the bottom of the screen and uh, any uh, questions regarding the audio or visual problems you face please uh, upload it in the chat box i can help you out and uh, questions only in the q and a box will be uh, answered so i request everyone's uh, cooperation in it and uh, before starting the webinar uh, i'd like to give some insights about our upcoming uh, global uh, globe's biggest exhibition and conference for recycling uh, the third edition of e-commerce expo after the successful completion of uh, two editions with the participations from leaders across the globe uh, this we are uh, we are making it, it even in a bigger scale it is a three day exhibition and conference focused on uh, three different streams e-waste recycling and refurbishment battery recycling and refurbishment automotive recycling and refurbishment with 70 plus stalls 50 plus renowned speakers uh, 600 plus delegates and uh, 5,000 plus visitors. Uh, the event is scheduled on uh, 18th, 19th and 20th uh, May at the Lalit Ashok Bangalore. It is a gateway to all reverse commerce businesses in India. And uh, the event is supported by Ministry of Environment Forest, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Karnataka State Pollution Control Board, Central Pollution Control Board, Bureau of Indian Standards. And uh, this will give you a stage to trade, uh, debate and discuss about uh, the upcoming technologies, implementation of EPR, and also like uh, business models and chart of the way ahead for each sector. And here uh, we, we in e-commerce, uh, we want to pave the way towards sustainability and circular economy so we are working in this field and uh, here you go with a video of uh, the e-commerce expo Globe's biggest recycling and info conference and exhibition experience 
comprehensive collaboration mm -hmm. already in mm -hmm. Spire Mind's mm -hmm. latest technologies. We have come a long way to get to where we are today. I can't wait to the first conference business. Power and green are nature together. This company knows about a sustainable circular economy. The Commerce Expo has brought the individuals together with the support of government of India. Discuss a healthier, happier, and more sustainable tomorrow. Give them connecting people around the globe. Exchange the ideas, latest technology. Uh, so it is an uh, exciting opportunity for all the like-minded people to come network uh, uh, with all the C-suit executives and also the Star Wars from the industry. Already the registrations are open and seats are getting filled. Uh, we have already filled the half of the exhibition area. So interested participants can reach out to us. I'll be sharing a few contact details in the chat box. So if you are interested to be a part in the event, uh, you can do reach us. We'll be helping you out. And we are also coming up with a, a renewable energy recycling webinar, which will be hosted on uh, 24th of uh, February. That will also be happening in Zoom. So I'll share the details regarding those events also. So if anyone is interested, you can please reach us. You can also write to us in the mentioned email ID. And uh, without any further delay, uh, let me introduce you uh, the panelists for today's event. Uh, so we have uh, we have Mr. Naveen Prakash Sharma, uh, the Executive Director of uh, Gravita India Limited, and uh, Dr. Mamta Mahopatra, Principal Scientist at CSIR, Institute of Minerals and Materials Technology, and uh, Mr. D.B. Prabhu, co-founder of uh, Respos Waste Management and Research Private Limited. So Mr. D.B. Prabhu will be acting as a moderator in today's uh, panelist. So over to you, sir. Well, thanks, uh, Chelsea, for this. And uh, welcome, the, my panelists, uh, to this particular session. Generally, when we talk about budget, most people look at the taxes and how is it going to impact the income tax and the GST, whether there is any reduction. If there is no reduction in income tax, the budget doesn't have anything new. So that's the general <laughs> feedback that everybody gives you. This budget is the same as last year's budget because my tax slabs are the same. But that's not the way one should look at budget, right? Because uh, a budget is a major indicator of the macroeconomic directions of the country. Uh, and if you if you think about it, the economic growth of a, any country is very closely related to the natural environment. They're very closely linked. And the way it is linked is like climate change is the biggest negative externality that affects uh, a business. Okay. Uh, and this climate change, this uh, negative externalities that result out of climate change, primarily the calamities, they are never budgeted. But when they occur, there's always a few hundred crores of loss, right? And from that perspective, one needs to think about how is this budget going to impact the industry and how is it going to impact the environment? Because even if there's a lot of push for, uh, for industrial growth and there is no enough uh, emphasis on prevention of climate change or slowing down of uh, pollution, then we are in for big trouble. Uh, so for every, every organization per se, if you look at it, um, is affected by 
external factors apart from competition and the industry and it's generally you can look at those factors from a point of view of the pestel framework uh, where pestel start stands for uh, political economic social uh, technology uh, legal and environmental right so these these six attributes if you look at them they really shape the uh, the strategy of an organization and a union budget has an impact on all of these uh, these six elements if you think about it because it gives you an idea about uh, the political intent of the government it gives you an idea about uh, what could be the social fallouts or what could be the social benefits coming out of this or uh, it also gives you an idea about where the economy is growing and uh, whether any new regulations are being uh, thought about so and of course uh, many other things but primarily we are since we are talking about uh, the environment this is the first time when the budget has been uh, embedded with so many words related to environment and uh, sustainability Uh, so first of all i would uh, thank recommerce team for putting this very important event together this i think is the first time when there is a focused discussion on the impact of a budget on the environmental sector right so uh, without further ado i would request uh, navin sir to give his uh, understanding about the budget and how he feels it's going to impact uh, the overall recycling sector or the refurbishing sector thank you professor as you rightly said that for everyone the budget is those taxes and those numbers but on the other hand when we go deep into the budget i'll see see in in 90s when we talk about more of open of economy and financial sector was the area and post 2000 is more of real estate and then came digital so these were the area you will find that the jobs the new business everything was coming in it but henceforth globally sustainability environment is the next 10 years at least so whether you are going to put up an industry or you are into research or you are looking for upgrading your skills or want to do some courses this will be the area where every government is going to focus particularly government of india in this budget has put these all areas at multiple times as professor told see there are somewhere they mention about clean and sustainable mobility they are talking about energy trans transition and climate action they are talking about solar power they are talking about transition to carbon neutral economy and circular economy they are directly talking about so you see among their 100 points 7 to 8 points they are talking all these which lead to sustainable development correct and government is also telling that there will be a job creation r and d in all these areas among them electric mobility they name it sunrise sector so if you effectively talk about circular economy there also they have clearly mentioned in black and white where they are talking about 10 sectors including e waste end of life vehicle oil waste toxic and hazardous waste which include tire lead acid battery and other batteries then other sectors which government has already framed different committees under niti aayog and lot of discussion is going on since almost one year and the reports are already framed and what happens this particular sectors which we called recycling now it is named as circular economy it was more of controlled by informal sector reason being nobody wants to study this if you even study engineering forget about it you will have started reading uh, it studying it and they are not going for a core engineering mechanical electrical civil and this is below that the recycling thing 
so there was nobody who were there wearing coat tie into recycling sector but over okay. a period of time that has change is happening so it is more controlled by informal sector so there are certain so basically the recycling sector is blamed for pollution because the people who are dealing into are from informal sector they say it is reverse they are clearing the all kachra or waste of your this thing so when we say ki at your home also we say kachra wala yaar so there is a there is a video i had is there the mother is saying to her kids don't sell kachra wala yaar wo kachra wale to hum hain because he is the one who is clearing our stuff okay wo to safai wala hai safai wala so similarly the recyclers or the people are into sustainable system they are the one who are clearing it but what happened over a period of time everybody's thought process is that they are the one who are creating this thing no it is created by us now government mm-hmm. has find out focus and they have created that ecosystem they have put given it a focus in the budget as well and they know that this development can happen when everybody is being involved whether they are from the informal sectors because people as low as from the rag pickers to the big traders who are dealing into because see what you will get from the municipal waste or from rag picker that what stuff we are dumping from our kitchen waste or from our house waste but on the other hand waste generated from our vehicles a vehicle generate tires in his lifetime at least 3 4 5 times or four tires then it generate oil which every year or one and a half year you generate that depending on the capacity of the vehicle waste oil and there is a battery so lead acid battery is there for start stop and later lithium ion will come so that generation is also there every 3 years so a life of 15 20 years that is another generation then there are certain parts metal parts which you replace and then at the end of the day Now entire vehicle going to get recycled. So, so these these weights are handled by not from that low level or informal people, but the method of handling was in informal way that vehicles are going for scrapping at Mayapur in Delhi or some other area, and then further recycling and reprocessing or sorting was happening at various informal places. So these are the sector. I urge everyone who are there already in this sector to invest. their money their time their skill everything because this is the one the next 10 years belongs to this sector it will grow exponentially and that focus is clearly coming into the budget as well and i am fortunate that i am part of various committees which are part of circular economy uh, under pmo and niti aayog so 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 i feel that if we this is the right time to enter as an student as an academician or or a businessman or a startup the things this will be the happening place in time to come so Correct. later on we can discuss further on sir thank you sir sure sure so thank you very much uh, namin sir for your insights and i do agree with you that this is a happening place and this is the place to be at the, at the moment and i and i recollect uh, certain things that when you said about uh, you know how waste management looked at when i finished my mba and i told my family that i want to get into something to do with uh, waste management they were like what have you gone crazy <laughs> so yeah i do agree with you that's the way it is but things are changing i see a lot of new fresh blood coming in this particular industry uh, people coming from abroad and starting wanting to start uh, something in the recycling domain or the environmental domain so a lot of encouraging things happening and i'm very happy about it and uh, yes the budget of course uh, is going to help so i would request uh, uh, mamta ma'am uh, can you ma'am can you share your thoughts about how do you, how do you think this budget is going to really impact uh, uh, the overall circular economy and the recycling and refurbishing industry per se thank you uh, sir and uh, uh, i really thank you the recommers team to uh, uh, just uh, uh, 
uh, have a such a wonderful discussion on budget and uh, correlate with the circular economy as i understand uh, I, being a researcher i am a simple researcher and and from r and d sector so what we believe the budget uh, is not only for the uh, like uh, growth of uh, country as a whole it is uh, belongs to the community growth as well as uh, from urban sector to uh, to our uh, means uh, not only from uh, from the science sector it it has to go to the common man through science and technology so the budget should look into every aspect so uh, looking into that this year budget is actually very encouraging towards the uh, r&d sector and also towards the industrial sector which will really helpful for the common man to get the benefit how it uh, affects uh, just for an example uh, i can give you one example let's say the battery sectors and ev sector uh, as of you know in india uh, like uh, all over world india is lagging behind this uh, recycling business as well as uh, the growth of eb sector is not as like as us china and other country so this is because of our uh, these things lack, lacking behind in the previous budget which is now been included here and if you see uh, the circular economy is not only just we will do industry or industry or uh, we will uh, include science and technology in industrial sector we have to see also in somewhere we are lacking the awareness program so uh, whatever uh, the thing is changing uh, our technology is changing it is very lately the people are knowing so uh, therefore it also affects the output so whatever budget is allocated if Uh, like it will spread to common man so lot of msme will come come up and if we spread the these are the issues like r and d or industries facing many big industry has very small small uh, problem which can be look into through this budget allocation and they can come come up with new business idea like uh recycling industry collection is a problem dismantling is a problem so the these are the uh, things if we can can help to uh, maintain a flow so that the real circular economy come into the business and it will give a uh, like a boost to our economic growth so also uh, it, it involves the waste management how we will minimize and how we will uh, procure the zero waste like uh, foreign partners so these are the views i would like that definitely the current budget uh, allocations and the awareness and program like this also helps people to understand Uh, why why this changes has been come in india or in national level to stabilize our economic growth not in uh, current situation later like pandemic situation we may have face lot of similar kind of situation how we will sustainable uh, ourselves through our in house resources recycling is actual nothing but it is a in house resource we have to properly evaluate we have to properly utilize we have to properly see how economically benefited to ourselves and our country so that is my uh, uh, idea and understanding about this uh, uh, budget to circular economy thank you uh, i i handed over to other panelists thank you so much thank you madam uh, i think you brought forward a very important uh, point that the social aspect of the budget also needs to be looked into how it is actually going to to impact this social the common man okay so from that perspective i'll let me ask you a follow up question uh, from in this budget there is a provision for a lot of agricultural reforms in in terms of digitization of farming uh, so 
what do you think this is going to have what kind of impact do you think the digitization of farming will have on waste creation uh, management and and in general pollution i would say yeah uh, of course digitization is uh, like uh, this these are the uh, modern technique uh, which already been uh, uh, like uh, already it is implemented in different countries so definitely it will give us a, a like um, a very beneficial uh, output uh, in latter stage when the people really understand why, why this digitization means let's say uh, for a farming things lot of reject things are coming and this reject things neither mm. it is going to anywhere they just simply burn and they just uh, stock piling or landfilling kind of things but if you see in the rnd venture there are lot of like uh, let's say simply from rice or silica can be generated so some metallurgical uh, valuable things also we can get from farm like graphene can uh, come from farm so these are the uh, scientific views can come and uh, the uh, like a simple farmer doesn't understand what is graphene simple farmer cannot mm. understand what is silicon carbide what is the use we know we uh, mm. like aerospace industry and the other industry they use this and there are many things in india which is actually uh, since we are a populated country so lot of farming rejects are coming which can be recycled uh, and can be taken care of uh, through r&d and industrial ventures and it can only be happen if we will digitalize and we can see the informations and it has to available to uh, in the uh, like uh, every aspect so that Uh, the MSME or other people can think up to have a business opportunity from this. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank. Thanks for that. Uh, and Navin sir, I was just thinking uh, when you were talking that about you know this budget also has some provisions for um, you know enhancement in the ECLGS and the CGTM CGTMSC uh, stipulations what they have. the emergency credit line uh, guarantee scheme and uh, the credit guarantee uh, scheme for the msmes now because of this uh, additional availability of uh, of money how do you think this can also be uh, you know this can also be useful in terms of for the waste management sector right see the people who involved in this particular waste management or recycling or correction or circular economy they are mostly of msme companies only so up till now this sector was not treated as an industry status was not given to this particular but indirectly it is getting the same status what you get an industry because this falls under msc and msme is being extended credit line so you though still the industry status is not there for recycling but the indirect benefit will certainly help to expand activities uh, all those as msme who are into this particular sector yeah i i agree with you i think the, the day is not far where uh, recycling itself will become a mainstream industry because uh, one very important thing is um, they have already talked about uh, those 10 focus sectors in circular economy action plans and all of them revolve around some kind of recycling or renewable uh, resource so i am very hopeful that uh, definitely this will become mainstream uh, very soon and yeah that that's that's a very interesting thing that's that we are likely to look at so uh, another thing that also came to my mind was you also mentioned while you were talking about uh, logistics improvement so this this budget also said talk something about uh, seamless multimodal movement of goods and people can you can you elaborate a little more on that and help us understand how it will uh, help 
how the how to help the logistics and in turn how logistics will have a good impact on the waste management can you help us understand please yes so so, so basically uh, if we talk about this budget so the many words which were used initially for that uh, ministry of road transport related that infrastructure side wherein the on minister mr nitin gadkari when he, he talks about he talks about so passionately that he will tell from there you will reach to surat surat se main upar jaunga i will reach there down will come here then this highway will connect this so that that's the one see that infrastructure development the way it is taking place and this entire new development is taking place they are also building certain highway or expressway which will be using clean technology they will be there will be charging stations and all that so so though the focus again remain on environment that focus remain on the infrastructure development anyway the recycling so recycling has to take place within a certain distance because otherwise that cost if you transfer more material from one distance to another you are creating those carbon footprint so it has to take place i'll say any the low value items need to be recycled within a vicinity of 200 or 250 kilometers so and after that and that infrastructure development is already taking place you will see lot of state government is coming up with recycling park that concept is coming up uh, of late i heard about uttarakhand they have already uh, floated tenders uh, in the newspaper and uh, since we are based at jaipur so rajasthan government is also coming up with a recycling park near uh, jaipur delhi highway in between there and they had lot of meetings and i'll tell you these type of things are being given to pollution control department look the, the say they are the regulators here they are being given to develop the industry so the thought process is totally changed so certainly <laughs> such type of uh, road development and facility development creation of such recycling park will be the enablers for this industry yeah great <laughs> so uh, mamna ma'am mamta ma'am one small question for you on uh, since you especially uh, you are specialized in, in the r&d sector uh, how do you think this digital university initiative will boost the r&d sector per se and of course when there is more r&d on waste there will be more opportunities in waste and so on but how this how would this digital university and pm e vidya uh, pme vidya is probably a different uh, initiative but digital university initiative how does how do you think it will help the uh, research and development sector yeah. uh, this digitalization is uh, is uh, is uh, in my concept it is just a education we have to uh, it, it spread the education fast means when people come to each other they first try to learn what is going on so let's say in recycling uh, since it is uh, based on recycling mostly we are focusing over here so let's say as, uh, some e waste or some kind of thing if you see generally in india people doesn't know people knows that there is a kachra box you put everything there mostly put everything there no segregation is there and uh, people doesn't know the value of this uh, uh, e waste they simply throw it uh, most of the people only 10 to 20% of the of this uh, uh, in our nation they know about the value of uh, this e waste who are educated and if you are going to a village people doesn't know that so from this digitization also we can educate people first that okay these are the things these are not to be thrown like that we have to preserve it as a resource and it is not only we our future generation will utilize that like we have lot of depletion uh, being it is a like critical metals 
or water whatever you will say these are we are now going towards depletion of many natural resources and natural so, source of uh, the raw materials so this is the time if we will implement properly the digitization people know about this value of this matter material so then that will help us to uh, uh, whatever our scarcity of raw materials that will definitely help us to uh, uh, make a supply chain and it will definitely help industry to get lot of raw material to uh, uh, make their uh, whatever their industry sustainable because most of the industry in recycling uh, uh, area they are not getting raw materials so that will definitely help secondly uh, like from r and d sector like some uh, since it is uh, like uh, in one lab nothing is available uh, whatever we are thinking that we will do that so it needs a networking of different labs or different industry so through digitization also we are complementing each other that is that therefore therefore we are now approaching towards say complete development of technology not the partial development of technology which actually the major focus of circular economy circular economy means in other way we have to develop a technology where everything is fulfilled starting from your waste to energy your benefits everything should be fulfilled so that we'll get a circular economy of any kind of business or any kind of uh, uh, like potential ability uh, for our uh, uh, economic growth so i think digitization is uh, uh, very much important uh, for coming days and for our future uh, great great thank you thank you ma'am so um... as i understand from our eminent panelists both of them seem to agree that uh, this budget is uh, is definitely talking about some concrete things as far as circular economy is concerned and um, like we have said this is the first time that we have seen so many green terminologies come inside the budget earlier uh, it used to be more about uh, sector sector specific sectoral budgets is what we were accustomed to Like a few thousand crores given to agriculture, a few thousand crores given to uh, environment, and so on and so forth. Nobody knew where that few thousand crores goes, or people don't even think of how many zeros are there in that number. But um, what is required for the circular economy is more of a holistic thinking, which I think this time, uh, this time the budget has very, uh, you know, very well put together all of those things in one place. so there is something for the agricultural uh, reforms there is something for the uh, msmes there is something for uh, awareness programs and and uh, uh, spreading of or knowledge dissemination i would say uh, there is something for the knowledge dissemination through digital universities there is something for uh, um, in terms of in terms of even distribution of money distribution of resources digital banking and digital payments will make it uh, much more easier and much more um, uh, i would say the divide will go down and one very important thing of this budget was in terms of green bonds now specifically there have been lot of bonds the government has always been coming up with bonds for different types of uh, projects infrastructure bonds and agricultural bonds and uh, many types of development bonds have always been uh, declared by the government this is the first time when we heard something like a green bond wherein uh, the government is going to to put 20% or no that is in blended finance okay the green bonds is something where government is going to raise public money and put that money in green projects now what that means is probably till now waste management or uh, resource recovery or resource management or whatever terminology we want to give it that activity was restricted to the private sector government was only trying to uh, to collect all the trash together and 
may be enable it by uh, enable the recyclers by selling it to, to them or allowing them to pick up from somewhere but now when they are talking of green bonds it probably means that the government is interested in setting up large scale resources through these bonds and of course they will not want to run it because given the uh, the way the entire economy is moving is moving towards the public private partnership model uh, as far as such infrastructure projects are concerned so i think that is also a very good thing and i can see uh, mr venkat is also here now online so venkat welcome to this uh, event and uh, you are i know that you are a very you know uh, you are very passionate about uh, about resource management and re and refurbishing industry now if you look at the 94th point of the budget it was purely about circular economy yeah. and where they talked about 10 sectors uh, in that refurbishing was one of them and e waste happened to be named as the number one in that category what do you have to say about this largely the the entire objective of looking at now the reverse commerce businesses is changing there is a different perception which is set out now if government is talking and the words and phrases are used in budget it gives the itself its own significance because there are there is a there is one point which if if you want to call someone out of the crowd you want to make some statements to uh, like in a crowd of 100 if you want to make statement to one individual you pick up the name so similarly these names are picked up this time because the industry is seeing some lot of significance in coming days and with a little bit of exposure to this industry in the last 5 6 years and we see this is just the beginning as we see in the we were talking about the same words Five years, six years before stating that this is the beginning, I still feel this is still the beginning. A lot of opportunity for a lot of people to get into the business. Navin sir was telling, like we need a lot of uh, people coming into the business. Like uh, th that that that's the scale of the business, and there is lot to go forward. Uh, sir, I have a Navin sir works very closely with the government. I have a question for you. Any uh, soon can we get any PLI schemes for the recycling businesses? <laughs> i think for the recycling business no because <laughs> there they are talking about the scale so this business is so much scattered so scaling will be the challenge so there it is mainly coming on those sectors or where there is a scarcity like semiconductor or chips issues are there so there that will come there only <laughs> that, 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 i think that, that will come more in the sunrise uh, those industries which are uh, mentioned in the sunrise sector ai clean energy drones i think that's where it will come this this is <laughs> already blown up sun but only thing is not recognized you can you see everywhere so what mr venkat told na you you were already knowing but only now they started calling by name everybody know the recycling only thing was that we were not name naming it see we are into lead recycling when it comes to social side if i tell where i in, in commonly when we talk about somebody people say lead what is lead they, they, they don't know lead and lead is a metal which is fourth largest non ferrous metal and in the common man in your society your relative what industry you are working they say lead they understand that we are into some pencil lead or something like that. so that sort of gap is there and on the other end the primary production everybody know oh mining sector okay metal sector but this recycling e sector has challenge recycling understanding is not there so now firstly at least we are being given name in the budget and as he said that this is the beginning but i foresee this beginning has lot of potential to grow and see i was just going through somewhere i found government has started a course through igno the course is post graduation in sustainability or sustainable science something like that so means they you will see mba in this you will see engineering in this because each when you have a mechanical electrical why not an e waste recycling management course i i, I am all, i at niti i also when they were making policy i always advocated that there has to be course bsc in recycling then you can have a honors like we have a honors so you have a honors in elect electric waste or somebody in plastic waste or somebody in metal waste something like that so there is lot of lot of potential lies here so that recognition has come 
Yes, sir. Now, uh, please, sir, I just wanted to add this point. Now, I, I see some messages also that there is an awareness education needed. We need a different narrative now. Uh, the narrative is the stigma of, as you said, like when you, uh, when Prabhu sir started, there was a stigma, you are getting into waste management, like something, these stigmas have grown now. Now you can see uh, brand ambassadors coming up for waste management. Now Cashify is showing some ads in uh, all the channels where uh, the heroine who was acting in the Pushpa movie, which was recently came out, Rashmika Mandana is, is the brand ambassador. We can see a different narrative also coming for the recycling. They are talking about buyback about the phones. The perception and the narratives will be changing. And there is a lot of, as I see every day today, we can observe that tons of startups coming in in this space uh, significantly to talk about what they can offer for the industry. And I think at, at the, when, when we're talking about all these things, we are also trying to do every little bit of... Uh, aspect of picking up subjects which are later or sooner very important for the industry. Like for example, PV, PV is another uh, big challenge because we started uh, the implementation of solar panels into early 2001, 2002, 2003. Now we, we assume and presume that the life cycle of a solar PV is are about 20 years. And all the governments are so ambitious globally and especially in India to make complete solar go green, green. But when we create so much of PVs, where these PVs fall under, which category, whether it falls under e-waste or whether it needs a different policy, different stigma, altogether, there are a lot of questions which has to also be addressed. So something like that, we are picking up multiple subjects on each of them and also create a lot of awareness and training around the same. Uh, Chelsea, can you drop a little bit of a, a banner on uh, of the the conference which we are having on February 24th on the renewable recycling. You can just post it in the messages so that, and the link to register. So we, we are trying to create this awareness in this entire process. So that's all like when, when we are talking, there's, there should be a different narrative for all this entire industry. The narratives I've started because uh, I, I, I was very wondered to see Cashify do something significant because uh, though there are companies like Too Good, which came up very aggressively but could not sustain from Flipkart, now we see that um, they moved completely to a social uh, approach than a refurbished approach. But Cashify is still sustaining in the system. Uh, apart from there are many startups which uh, grew up with good start, good investments also coming in, but could not make any significance. What do you want to add, Prabhu sir, here on this? No, adding is one, what you said, narrative. The narrative is has already been uh, there. I mean, like you said, a lot of brand ambassadors are doing things. But I think this budget 2020 itself is a statement in itself. Yes. And like all of you have been saying, it has been named now. At least the sector has got a name. So, naam to aage hai list mein. Ab, Kaam ab number bhi aaja hai. Number, ab, number bhi aaja hai. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... I think it's a it's a overall uh, coming back to our point about the provisions in the budget and the impact on the waste management sector. It's a phenomenal budget as far as waste management is concerned because never before have we got this kind of recognition. And I only hope that going further it will only uh, be better and better. Just to summarize uh, all the points that we talked about, uh, the logistics improvement uh, through seamless multimodal transport, etc. Would definitely help in terms of uh, more technology adoption, more technology adoption, which would, which means more business, and ultimately, when there is more business, growth gives rise to waste. Okay, and when growth gives rise to waste, that waste needs to be managed very well. Uh, unlike in case of, um, I mean, and then the money also has to be there to uh, to manage that waste, and that's where the green bond fits in very well. Even the blended finance, uh, what they talked about uh, for the thematic funds and the sunrise sectors, that also fits in very well. Earlier, uh, like Navin sir also said, it was more sectoral in nature. And when it becomes sectoral in nature, we don't think about the other things. Whereas this time, all sectors and the growth resulting out of it, the growth will then result into waste generation. And the waste generation has to be handled properly for which these green bonds and blended finance initiatives will help. And that's the way the whole ecosystem can be uh, can be built in. And 
A important point over here is the total allocation for circular economy in this year's budget is 3,030 crores, which is 5.6 percent higher than the last time's budget, and that's a big number. Okay, so to me, I think from a waste management perspective, you have to summarize the budget in just two takeaway points. One, more scrap is going to be available for sure, and two. there is going to be a bigger market for refurbished goods okay so these two are my key takeaways and i would uh, in the interests of time i would stop over here and we'll wait for we will probably open for questions so chelsea if there are any questions directed to any of the panelists can you please uh, look into it and uh, we can answer one by one uh, yes sir uh, we have a first question from mr uh, vivek goel yes asked uh, can someone talk about government subsidies or incentives for uh well government has incentives and subsidies for starting anything in recycling uh it's not just recycling any industry any anything when you start there are always uh, subsidies and incentives available you need to know how to uh, how to navigate through the system to to reach there there are ways and means for example in the recycling sector there is a state government subsidy and there is a central government subsidy like that in any sector for if you look at there is a, a subsidy given by the uh, ministry of industries so navin sir will be probably also be able to tell more about this yeah it is the subsidy is not specifically to recycling sector but most of the government if you come up any new projects they are giving subsidy in terms of interest subsidy or either in terms of electricity duty subsidy or the local tax subsidy so these type of subsidies are available in every state almost whether it's in developed state like gujarat or in jnk or eastern states most of the sectors are uh, states are giving because they want the industry to come up and the new industry will certainly come up in these sectors only because other sectors are already saturated or they are the one where you require a big capital investment right and in, if you are registered as a startup if you are registered as a startup uh, you also get uh, many benefits under the startup india scheme right so there is a tax holiday as well Uh, there is a low interest loan and there are there are many schemes one needs to figure out which schemes fits best for your business and your uh, initiative and then we can look at that and i could see one question is there what is the scope of software system in waste management and recycling sector so may i answer this yes please okay so see software is one part so if you talk about as a it as a whole so my belief is that it is the thing which reduce cost which reduces time and which reduces inefficiency and that also reduces corruption imagine the things if you would have booking the train tickets like we used to do it 25 or 30 years before so the corruption can be removed it's not corruption with the government only corruption is there at every stage so it <coughs> which can improve efficiency reduce corruption so what is happening this recycling sector is already grown up recycling is happening in the country only thing is that the the structure is such that there is a flow of material to some informal sector and this it can be the best tool to bring things to formal sector create this as a as an industry status you can see the company i know a company called recycle that's in hyderabad they have used it as a tool for all these waste management they have connected all the rag pickers and there is an app and the the vehicle goes to all those locations they know that on sunday or tuesday this vehicle will come to my location and they they, they give their material there load the photographs payment is done at the vehicle itself and they are being paid So, so so there is no gap where there is some middlemen are not there they are being directly entertained 
by the uh, industry to for give, giving their remuneration and waste is being collected and being tracked well so certainly it role is there in this sector uh, let me add a couple of things to that uh, specifically if we are to look at uh, the gps systems help you to track uh, the garbage trucks or the collection vehicles where like you rightly said helps in removal of corruption now corruption is not only in terms of taking money it's also in terms of siphoning the waste so that siphoning will go away because then you are able to track where that where your truck is how much time it is stopping at a particular place why is it stopping all those things can be taken care of right so gps and uh, related software helps over there point number 1 point number 2 is now with blockchains coming in with blockchains there is a lot of documentation which was required earlier and a lot of documentation used to be duplicated or forged that forging will go away once the document then the document is on blockchain you cannot tamper it all those things are are happening and there is one company called recycle x the one that you talked about recycle that is r e c y k a l now this one we can talk in cycle sorry circle x c e r c l e x this company got a funding of 1.9 million dollars very recently and they provide software for collection so the scope of use of use of software is uh, is definitely there and like you rightly said it it will remove all the inefficiencies in the system collection is the key problem when it comes to waste management and to solve that problem technology can do wonders Uh, we have one question on any policy which compels municipalities or uh, towns and villages for proper waste management there is no policy per se over there but there is a directive given by uh, which i have seen actually and uh, you may be able to correct anyone may be able to correct me also or add to it that there is a directive given by the uh, pollution control board or the ministry of environment and finance to all the collectors of municipalities that they are responsible for uh, collecting the garbage in a effective manner uh, that is one and second initiative is about the smart cities so whoever wants to uh, whichever municipality wants to you know, to try to convert themselves into a smart city garbage management is one of the key aspects that is looked into so these two things i am aware of but apart from that there is no policy per se because obviously garbage management is one of the key responsibilities of the municipal body so there can't be a there is no need for policy to define it it's just a just a duty that they have to do yeah yeah so they already have that uh, municipal solid waste management and handling rules year 2000 that is under mofcc mm-hmm. and apart from that each and every resource we, we call it waste but these are resource there is a separate policy coming in you had have seen that ministry of road transport has come up with vehicle scrapage policy uh, last year then uh, this december 31st uh, tire waste management policy as draft has come on the website of mfcc then uh, few weeks back there are plastic waste management revised which will be effective from 1st of august then we had earlier e waste uh, management rules they are being uh, modified and i got chance to visit mfcc yesterday that the battery waste management rules which were drafted in 2020 they are being uh, rediscussed yesterday and i hope to see that they are coming soon in next uh, one or two months time so they are covering now every battery it used to be lead acid battery so each resource will have a separate rules separate rules so then that become part of the overall policy yes sir i just want to add even in the villages there is a specific budgets in gram panchayats to distribute ba- uh, dust bins to educate people to collect to process but significantly it's not happening in in the current ecosystem but there are some panchayats which been which have been rewarded uh, at the national and the state levels for efficiently implementing uh, waste management rules in the panchayat levels even that such uh, yeah, survey first yeah. survey city survey that is a part of that only yeah yeah, yeah. uh we have one question for uh, navin sir uh, navin sir uh, you recycle lead which is one of the heavy metal and a health hazard from your experience are the local authorities supportive of what you do or they treat recyclers similar to any other industry i am trying to understand perspective of local authorities 
See, here the, there's no involvement of any local authority because uh, whenever you recycle lead, that our norms are governed by Ministry of Environment and Forest. You have to, they comes under a red category of industry. That as we have industry categorization of green, orange, and red. So you have to have a specific additional permission which any industry takes place. So additional permissions are being given as per hazardous waste management rule 2016. So there's no other blockage. Till the time you have all regulation or this uh, certificate or approvals and process. Uh, next question, tax benefit cycle products. There is no tax benefit as of now on recycling products. So the, the, that will come in time to come. It will come in indirectly because in the new recycling policy, policy of each product I'm talking about, government is talking about recycling content in the new product. So moment government says a new T-shirt or a new plastic bottle has to have a 30% recycling content. So what will happen? That will increase the uh, availability of recycling. So the price advantage recyclers will get. So that will become a indirectly incentive to that industry. As of now, they are treated inferior products. When government put a, a mandatory condition of minimum recycling content, what is there in USA? There the recycled plastic is sold higher than the virgin. So that's the incentive. So that will come once this policy where they define the content. Participants, have any questions, uh, I request you to post it in the Q&A box. We are done with the question. If there are any more questions, it's welcome. You can post it in the Q&A box. You can also mention like uh, which panelist you are addressing to, so they can answer in specific. There are no more questions. Uh, just to, I think I'll just, sir, Professor, you want to add something or you want to conclude? No, I think we can conclude because there, uh, we are well within the time. We have, we have Despite things. having less speakers, <laughs> we could. Uh, anything you want to add, madam? Yeah, uh, uh, I just wanted to add that uh, uh, maybe the EPR system, extended production responsibility, if it will include in our policy system, uh, which is under discussion, it may help all the recycling uh, industry or like researcher and MSME to see the recycle uh, materials value uh, uh, will be come in into the picture. So yes, that it is, is just already uh, there. Uh, to, the recent yes. policies, uh, if you see the tire waste management uh, policy, yes. we just put on the MOFCC website on 31st December 2021. Already they have put that EPR targets. And what they did, because I got chance to be there at the ground level. So what they did earlier, the responsibility was everyone's. A lot of people were involved in this policy, means uh, implementation. Now they have specified only two or three people, producer, recycler. That's all. Earlier they say dealer will this do, trader will do this do, and they cannot control so many people. So now the EPR targets or EPR penalties are being so high that it will automatically create incentive for recycling. It will automatically create shift from informal to formal sector. Okay, so there's one last question. Someone is asking about the impact of GST. Mr. Goel wants uh, Mr. Prabhu's number. Uh, Chelsea, you can say Prabhu's Prabhu phone number and email ID to Mr. Goel. Yeah. Yeah, you can share that in the chat, no problem. Okay. Impact uh, of GST? 
Yes, evil pact of GST into recycling. Yes, according to me, GST has brought transparency, sir. Anything it has brought to... transparency, but still there is a challenge. And frankly speaking, <laughs> uh, we are fighting, and uh, I got chance to represent on this particular matter uh, last month only to FM before the budget, and could get chance from one of the our member of parliament to speak to her for ten minutes. And my concern was that the tax, because there was no tax. Prior to GST, see, end of life products were having no tax. Only there was a VAT. Excise duty was not there, so that tax was only five percent. Now excise duty and VAT has merged that become a GST. So now post post end of life product also attract excise duty as and VAT. So the tax has increased. So that is the major challenge which while this is flowing to informal sector. So we requested that okay, don't reduce tax. bring it under reverse charge mechanism there is a uh, method where the tax is paid by the recycler not by the end of life generator if you generate some battery or some e waste you give it to a recycler that gst will be paid by the recycler and he will take credit as of now what is happening consumer price what is getting so that gst is included in this because he is not anyway going to deposit so he is not getting that much money and and once and that is flow is happening to informal sector so in gst uh, if reverse charge is brought so that will help to bring more money to the government as well and for recycling sector it will become to formal so there is one last question will take it sir any manufacturer can uh, can manufacturer made responsible for recycling end of life products At least twenty to thirty percent production capacity per year. Yes, that is what the EPR rules is all about. Uh, to take care of the producers, whatever manufacturers produce, there is an EPR policy so that they manage the end of life of the product. Yes, so so, so then, EPR says that manufacturer either they have to recycle themselves or what they are talking about, you take certificate from recycler. Authorized recycler. Uh, authorized recycler will give you that much certificate and that certificate will have some value. <coughs> so what we are talking about black blockchain and all that so those certificate will be digitally certified where there is no management of fake certification and all that so certainly manufacturer may not recycle but they can collect certificate thank you sir thanks for all your time uh, dr navin sharma from davita mr prabhu from bb prabhu from respos and ms mamta ma Uh, thanks for your time. We we were supposed to be joined by uh, Dr. Chatterjee, but unfortunately, he has held up with a meeting with the ministers today on a sudden note. So we could not have him on board. Uh, thanks for sharing the all the knowledge. This this was something new, uh, kind of an experience to talk about budget in recycling for us as well. So <laughs> thanks for the experience and thanks for give, sharing all the knowledge. Thanks thank for you, Chatterjee. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Mamta Madam. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thanks all of you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks for the thanks to the audience thank too. Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you, everyone, thank you. for making time for this and attending the webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you all. I have shared our uh, LinkedIn uh, as well as a Telegram group, so interested participants can join us. So you will be able to uh, know more about our future upcoming events. You can be a part in it. And uh, thank you once again. Uh, hope to meet you all in our uh, upcoming events. Thank you.